our identity and our people are being erased all for the sake to increase GDP. This is a new story from the Sunday Times. I will be quoting from the Sunday Times. This new story is also, I've seen it in the Sun and it's on GB News online as well. So it's, it's a new story which you probably will see today. I'm just going to quote again from the Sunday Times and maybe add a little bit on at the end of this little short video I'm making in respect of uh, the title which I've come up with, Our Identity, Our People Are Being Erased All For The Sake To Increase uh, GDP. So just bear with us please. So again, it's from the Sunday Times. I'll be quoting from that particular newspaper. Liz Truss's plan for more migrants to boost growth. Cabinet pushback of the bid to close skills gap. Liz Truss is facing her first cabinet row as she prepares to increase immigration to boost economic growth. The Prime Minister is pushing for wide-ranging reform of Britain's visa system to tackle acute labour shortages and attract the best talent from across the world. In the coming weeks, she intends to raise the cap on seasonal agricultural workers and make changes to the shortage occupation list, which will, will allow key sectors to recruit more overseas staff. Truss has told colleagues that she is keen to recruit overseas broadband engineers to support the government's pledge to make full fibre broadband available to 85% of UK homes by 2025. It has also been suggested that she could ease the English language requirement in some sectors to enable more foreign workers to qualify for visas. However, the proposed easing of immigration restrictions face strong resistance from some cabinet Brexiteers including Sula Braverman, the Home Secretary, and Kimmy Badenoch, the Trade Secretary. Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Business Secretary, has told colleagues he would support the changes only if they were to show to increase GDP per capita. A senior government source said, There is a view within the Treasury that migration is good for growth. That is a view what appears to be shared by the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. We cannot tear up our immigration rules People who voted for Brexit want to see controlled migration. Government sources have revealed that alongside the opening up of visa routes for specific sectors, ministers are discussing allowing in more highly educated workers from across the globe. This includes proposals for a new visa for workers who graduated from one of the top 50 or top 100 global universities. The Chancellor announced on Friday that a new plan will be published in the coming weeks to ensure the immigration system supports growth while maintaining control, signalling a departure from Boris Johnson's approach. Treasury documents noted that the decade of growth that followed the 2008 financial crash came partly from significant net inflows from migration. A government source said, we need to put measures in place so that we have the right skills that the economy, including the rural economy, needs to stimulate growth. This will involve increasing numbers in some areas and decreasing in others. A senior Whitehall, sorry, a senior Whitehall source said, businesses have been frustrated that the visa system, notably skilled work, has not been sufficiently responsive to specific shortages they have been facing. For example, the shortage occupation list that is part of the skilled workers visa has not been updated. Two million job vacancies were advertised last month within the social care sector, trying to fill 105,000 posts. There is also a shortfall of 40,000 nurses and 100,000 HGV drivers, and the farming industry has called for an extra 30,000 visas for seasonal workers. Nadim Zawawi, the Cabinet Office Minister, chaired a meeting about the proposed changes last week. He is understood to be in favour of updating the shortage occupation list Ranil Jawadinini, the Environment Secretary, is believed to be backing the plan to boost the number of seasonal farm workers. Separately, Badenoch is, under, is understood to be opposing proposals for a freedom of movement agreement with the Indian government as part of a trade deal she is negotiating. Having conceded a trade deal with the USA is unlikely to materialise while Biden remains in the White House, Truss has shifted the focus to striking deals with other big economies at speed before the next general election. Badenoch has told her priorities to secure a free trade agreement with India by Diwali, which falls on 24, October 24th. Truss has asked for the UK's negotiation team to be given a wide mandate as possible. However, 
while the Indian government is pushing for significant liberalisation of visa routes for workers and students, Badinok is said to be unwillingly to, to sign any agreement that would provide open access to a population of 1.4 billion. The UK granted nearly 1 million visas in the 12 months to March 2022, up significantly on pre-Brexit levels. So there you have it. So this is a Conservative government who is, in my my opinion, is going hand in cap to the rest of the world, I suppose they wanted their, some of their skilled workers, but also wanted more people to come into the UK to fill these alleged vacancies. Alleged vacancies which in a lot of cases have been created by mass immigration in the last 10, 15 years. So there, again, we're going to see more people come into this country via a visa route, not just by open borders like we had before with the EU citizens coming here, but now we're going to be getting people coming over uh, via visas. So the again, the the priority sectors, which is one we see a lot of, we did see a lot of this in the wake of COVID, is going to be healthcare in homes, uh, etc. for the elderly. So there, there, there's a lot of vacancies there. So they're going to be filled up again, not particularly by highly skilled people, but anybody. That's the impression I get, and they're actually slacking some of these roles. And I, I imagine this is going to be healthcare as well. Uh, the, the you know speaking English tests are going to be sort of lowered. I have spoke about this before about the NHS about how the uh, midwifery and other groups complained about the levels of English what need to be attained uh, via this visa system. So I see them will be sorry. I think they'll be slackening them as well. So again, it'll be more easy to recruit overseas nurses whose English is not particularly good. Uh, Again, there'll be more of this story to come out in the next couple of weeks, months, etc. Again, I've seen it today on Twitter, still people backing this woman, still people wanting uh, Boris Johnson to come back. The same Conservatives, for whatever reason, uh, blindly support this particular party or this particular government is beyond me. And this is a bit, hopefully this is a bit of an awakening for some people as well, because it is quite shocking when you look in detail what potentially could happen. And I've seen this before with Boris Johnson's government, again after Brexit, negotiating with different countries and allowing their citizens at a certain educational level to be fast-tracked into this country and especially a lot of African nations. We're also seeing at the moment a record amount of illegal immigrants crossing the channel. It's now up to 32, 33,000 and obviously other illegal immigrants coming to this country. We've seen endless amounts, tens of thousands of Ukrainian refugees coming over. We've obviously got Afghan refugees G's coming over, we signed up for that for the next five years. So it's 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 unbelievable, but they're actually legalising mass immigration. It might seem a little bit over the top, the remark I made, but it's like you said, it's us as a people, uh, we're just so we are getting gradually replaced. And it, it just, it's quite sickening to see. And especially in the workplace, and I've said this before, a lot of people might not get what I'm going to say, but I will say, a lot of people, semi-skilled workers, a lot of ordinary workers who have not got the... Uh, education uh, levels like others, unfortunately other people have and I include myself in that uh, we're the ones that are most affected by this because by the sounds of it it's basically anybody's going to be allowed to come into this country and compete uh, for you, for my labour etc and that's what's going to happen going forward so I really do my heart goes out for a lot of younger people I can't understand why especially when it comes to telecom engineers etc why they're not this government it's not making what do you call it uh, running out a program to encourage younger people to get into that trade it's excellent money why do we have to recruit people from abroad it's just beyond me it really is beyond me i think the re main reason being obviously is a financial one it's a lot cheaper to recruit people from abroad abroad uh you know, so it's quite sickening to see so please leave a comment uh i might put a live stream up later but i, I, probably, I don't know i see how i feel but please leave a comment on this particular story and you will see this again uh on various newspapers I, i'll quote again i saw this on the sun i think it was yesterday and I saw it again the Sunday Times today, which I'm quoting from, and the GB News have covered this as well. But I don't expect it to get too much uh, traction. And if it does, it'll only be for a short period of time. Again, thanks for your continued support and God bless.